What's up? I'm here today at the Talamina Drive in eastern Oklahoma. One of the most gorgeous spots on planet Earth as far as I'm concerned. If you're ever in eastern Oklahoma this time of year, late October, early November, you have to come check it out. Now, uh, if you own the original Mavic Mini, you probably already know there is no HDR photo mode. But this was not clickbait, so don't click away. Today I'm going to show you how to take HDR photos manually within the DJI Fly app with your Mavic Mini. Let's get to it. To take great photos with your Mavic Mini, first I suggest you turn on the zebra stripes and histogram to help with evaluating your exposure. Many times when you're flying on super bright days, it can be difficult to see your phone's display, so you can't always tell how well you're exposed with the naked eye. Unlike the higher-end DJI drones, the Mavic Mini doesn't offer HDR photos or automatic exposure bracketing. But that doesn't mean you can't take beautiful photos in high contrast areas. There are a couple of ways to achieve the high dynamic range you're looking for, and I'll start with the way I think is best. For this, you'll want to switch over to manual mode. Since the camera's aperture is fixed and you'll want to have your ISO set to 100, the only variable you can control here is your shutter speed. To use this situation, for example, if you were to expose the sky properly, your shadows would be crushed and you lose the detail and color on the ground. And if you expose for the ground, the sky is completely blown out and unusable. It would be impossible to take a single photo that is well exposed for each part of this image. That's why we need to take several pictures with bracketed exposures. Once you've framed your shot, you need to increase your shutter speed until the zebra stripes are gone from the brightest part of the image. And the EV meter in the bottom right corner is around negative two or negative three and take a photo. The histogram is helpful with this part so you can make sure the bright parts of the image aren't underexposed. I look for the brightest parts of the image to fall in the middle of the histogram to make sure I don't turn it down too far. Now without touching the sticks, you'll then lower your shutter speed by roughly half a stop or so and take another picture. You'll repeat this until you've taken five to seven photos. The more, the better. I start with the brightest part of the image and work my way down to the darkest parts. Uh, making sure to get a picture that is well exposed in each of those areas. That's where the zebra stripes really help. If you keep an eye on the darkest shadows and brighten them up to just below where the stripes come in, you'll be sure to have enough data for the software to create an HDR photo later in this process. Now you can achieve a similar result in auto mode by lowering and raising the EV level in between photos. I just prefer the manual mode because it gives more ability to fine tune the exposure. Now in this next example, we don't have as severe of contrast since we're not including the sky, but we still have some pretty deep shadows mixed with the brighter trees in the road. Using the same technique, you can capture more range and detail in the darker parts of the image. So now that we have our bracketed images, it's time to jump into the computer to combine them into HDR photos. You can do this in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever image editing software you prefer. I prefer Aurora HDR by the folks at Skylum because it's so fast and the AI does a great job of removing ghosting and enhancing images is super easy. So we're gonna hit open image. I've got these images all in a folder here already. Go ahead and select these. I always choose auto alignment just to make sure if there was any movement, especially with the drone, uh, we're gonna have some movement there in the air. Uh, so they're aligned. Um, ghost reduction, you can choose your reference image. It defaults to the zero EV, uh, the middle image. Um, there are times that I might change this if I had uh, something moving in one of the images like a car uh, you can go through and pick which image you prefer uh, to be the reference image. And uh, I like chromatic aberration reduction as well. So once we get all that, we hit create HDR. Let the computer do its magic for a moment here. And here we have our HDR image combined. So um, I'm going to make a couple of adjustments to it that I like to make. Uh, I'm going to pick my HDR look to maybe bump uh, 
the uh, temperature up just a touch since this is a fall photo give it a little bit warmer look somewhere in there not much and then um, I like to bump maybe the reds and the oranges just a touch to give it a little bit more of a fall feel somewhere in there 15 sounds good And there you have it, our HDR photo taken from seven different photos combined into one. Uh, here you get the blue sky. You get some of the detail back here uh, in the little mountain range area. And of course, uh, all your colors are preserved and uh, your shadows as well. Give you a little idea of the before and after. There we have with our adjustments off, you can see the sky is completely blown out. Uh, there's no blue there whatsoever. You can hardly see any detail in the range back there. Uh, here we get some blue. There weren't really any clouds out this uh, this day, so uh, you don't have any of those, but you would have those if not for that. But you can switch between, you can kind of toggle back and forth and get a feel for the before and after. Obviously, a vast improvement there. Real quick, let's go in and put together that other image that we took. Um, now, on this one, we had a car that was driving through the shot, I believe. So I'm going to see which one. It looks like this. Uh, well, it's the Zero EV. has a shot of the car in it. So I'm going to use that as my reference image again. See, it's on the Zero EV there. I'm going to hit Create HDR. All right, so here is our image combined. You can see that uh, since I used the image that has the car in it as the reference image, uh, it is in this one as well. Um, now I'm going to go and apply the same settings I used before. Uh, it's a little too orange for my liking, so I'm going to bump those back down. Um, where is that at? Okay, let's bring that down a touch. It's a little too much for me. Bring the reds down a little bit. As you can see here, again, I'll show you what it's like with it turned off. This is the reference image. Uh, you can see uh, you gain a lot of detail by combining all those images together in the, in the darkest parts of the picture. Um, again, we can swipe back and forth to show the before and after. Pretty impressive difference there. See how much color pops there. So there you have it. Again, I feel like this is a massive improvement over uh, what we would have had had we just taken a single image uh, where either the road in certain parts would be too bright or other parts of the trees would be too dark and you'd lose detail in one or the other. Uh, these HDR photos really make a big difference. If you stuck around this long, I'm going to assume you like this kind of content. So don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, all that stuff YouTubers say. Click on one of the videos on the screen and I'll see you in the next one.